Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at question number three from the 2019 Macroeconomics exam. This is set two. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your Macroeconomics AP exam. Let's go ahead and get into the question. Now this question is a production possibilities curve and comparative advantage question. We have two countries, Sweden and Norway, and they can both produce food or capital goods. For part A here, we have to draw a production possibilities curve for Sweden. Sweden can produce 50 units of food or 100 units of capital goods. Let's go ahead and sketch it out. We've got our axes here. As the question indicates we should, we're going to place the food on the horizontal axis and capital goods up there on that Y axis. And I'm going to draw here a linear production possibilities curve that indicates constant opportunity costs with 100 there on that Y axis and 50 there on that X axis. Make sure you put the numbers there just as the question indicates you should. Now I believe that a concave or bowed out curve here would be perfectly acceptable if you drew it that way. Now for part B on this graph, we're going to label three points. First, we're going to put a point at an efficient level of output. An efficient level of output is any point on the curve. It could be up top, it could be below, I put mine in the middle, but any point on that production possibilities curve that you drew will get you the point there. The second point we need to add labeled I is an inefficient level of output. Inefficiency is illustrated as any point within the production possibilities curve. So I labeled my point right there I, it's inside that production possibilities curve. The third point we need to mark is an unattainable level of output. This is a level of output that can't be reached because of scarcity. It's any point outside the curve labeled U right there. And if you got all three of those points, you've got your points for this part. For part C, we're going to assume that Sweden is going to change its level of production. It's going from producing 20 units of food and 60 units of capital to producing 30 units of food and 40 units of capital. They're just moving along their production possibilities curve. And now we have to identify what will happen to economic growth within Sweden as a result. The key to answering this question is understanding what is needed to have economic growth within a country. It requires greater quality or quantity of resources. And in this case, we're talking about capital goods. We see a decrease in the number of capital goods that Sweden is producing. As a result, we're going to see fewer capital goods, and that means slower economic growth. To get this point, simply answer it, decrease. There's a decrease in economic growth if they decrease their production of capital goods. For part D, we have to identify and explain which country has a comparative advantage in the production of capital goods. This is a math problem here, and we have to remember we're going to need these numbers from the table. Now, in order to find the comparative advantage, we have to calculate the opportunity costs of producing these capital goods. And in order to calculate the opportunity costs, we have to first realize that this is an output problem. The numbers in the table are units of output. They're finished units of food and finished units of capital goods. And the formula for comparative advantage when output numbers are given is the opportunity cost of A is the numbers we have for B divided by A. So other over is my mnemonic for remembering that. So the opportunity cost for Sweden's production of capital goods is the other one, units of food we've got, 50, divided by capital goods. That gives us one half a unit of food for every capital good Sweden produces. Now, Norway, on the other hand, the opportunity cost of one capital good is the numbers we have for the other one, food, divided by, which is 30 units of food, divided by the 120 units of capital. That gives us one fourth a unit of food for every unit of capital goods produced by Sweden. And comparative advantage is the ability to produce something at a lower opportunity cost. Which one of these is a lower opportunity cost? Well, we have one half a unit of food versus one quarter of a unit of food. So we have our lower opportunity cost there for Norway at one quarter a unit of food for every unit of capital produced. And so we just have to identify Norway and then explain using the math we have here because it can produce capital goods at a lower opportunity cost. Throw in the numbers there, one fourth is less than one half. And you've got yourself your points. So for part E, we're going to find a mutually beneficial terms of trade for 10 units of food. 
What that means, mutually beneficial, is that both Sweden and Norway would benefit from the trade. How many capital goods would they be willing to trade for 10 units of food, where both countries are happy with that exchange? Well, a mutually beneficial terms of trade will fall between the two countries' opportunity costs. So, earlier we calculated some opportunity costs. Let's look at them again here. We have one half a unit of food being worth one capital good for Sweden and one fourth of a unit of food being worth one capital good for Norway. Those are their opportunity costs for producing capital goods. So we know that one capital good for both Sweden and Norway should be worth between one half of a unit of food and one quarter of a unit of food. But here we're looking at 10 units of food. So to figure that out, we need to flip it around. We're not looking at capital goods, we're looking at food. So we need to flip it all around. So in order to find out how many capital goods each unit of food is worth, we're going to take the reciprocal and work backwards. Of course, the reciprocal means we flip those fractions upside down, and that tells us that now one food is worth not one half, we flip the fraction, it's two over one now, two capital goods. And for Norway, one unit of food is worth four capital goods. And that means that the mutually beneficial terms of trade for both Sweden and Norway will be one unit of food being worth between two and four units of capital goods. Since we're looking at 10 units of food here, just multiply both numbers by 10. And that means we can have any number between 20 and 40 units of capital goods for 10 units of food. Simply identify any number in between there let's say 30, and you've got your point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next macroeconomics exam. If you want a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com where there's lots of games and activities to practice the skills you need to know to ace your macroeconomics AP exam. If you still need a little more help after that, make sure you pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your macroeconomics or microeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.